Hello and welcome back to Excess Your Academy. So, guys, this is especially for the IIT Jam and all their discourse. So I'm completing the syllabus now. So, what we are going to start now is plant tissue culture and their techniques. So, from now onwards, you can see that all the uh, video lectures will be based on these plant tissue culture and their uh, respective techniques only. So, once this gets completed, and then I'll, then only I'll go to the next uh, topic of your syllabus. Okay. So, let's start with this topic. And uh, this is very interesting also, if you see, so we have already completed animal tissue culture. So you can see that there are uh, not much, but you can see few similarities are still there. Okay. So once you understand the animal tissue culture, it is very easy. It becomes very easy for you guys to understand plant tissue culture also. So we'll see what are these techniques are there? What are the applications? What are the different types of methods which are carried out in order to, you know, uh, propagate the different varieties or suppose the plants are getting extinct and not able to grow in certain particular area still in the lab you can grow so all the conditions are optimized so all these things we are going to learn in these uh, sections okay so tissue culture so we know that there are two types of tissue cultures already we have discussed uh, so that is animal tissue culture and plant tissue culture so in this we have already discussed many aspects are there so if you have not gone through these lectures please go back to the exercise academy and open the playlist of uh, iit jam gadby so you can there you can study the animal tissue culture so here onwards i will be talking about the plant tissue culture so all the videos lectures which, which will be you know uploaded now will be based on these plant tissue culture only. It's a bit a uh, lengthy topic, but interesting also. Okay, so what is plant tissue culture? So it is an in vitro cultivation of plant cell or tissue under aseptic and controlled environment condition. So this is always keep in mind because this is important. So whether it is animal tissue culture or plant tissue culture, you always need a septic uh, control environment conditions, okay? Now, in liquid or in a semi-solid well-defined nutrient media for the production of primary and secondary metabolites or to regenerate the plant. So this is like from here, you will also study about the bioreactors, like how we have talked about in animals about the bioreactors for the mass production of certain metabolites or growth factors. In the same way, plants, a plant a bioreactor is also there, which is mainly for the production of primary and the secondary metabolites. So these secondary metabolites mainly act as the antibiotics, okay? Or sometimes you need to regenerate the whole plant itself. So depending on the requirement of the researcher, either you can have the production of primary and secondary metabolites or you can have the entire whole plant regeneration. Okay. Okay. So now what are primary metabolites and secondary metabolites? This is important to understand. So they are involved in normal growth and development reproduction of the plants. Okay. But secondary metabolites, they are not. They are produced as the defense mechanism. Okay. So they are produced because of the uh, defense mechanism shown by the plants. An example includes carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Whereas in the case of secondary metabolites, it's the resins, gums, lanins, and latex. And that's why you see that in, cer in certain plants, okay, these plants have got the bitter taste or maybe some gooey uh, like kind of thing will be there. So that is like something in response to the defense mechanism. Okay. For example, I can take, uh, talk about the bitter guard. So we know why the bitter guard is bitter, okay? So in the vacuole of the bitter guard, in the vacuole, it is fully filled with those bitter uh, taste of that uh, metabolite is present, okay? So when you cut the bitter guard and it causes the rupturing of the vacuole in the plant cell. And because of that rupturing of the vacuole, the entire bitter content comes out, okay? That bitter content is also known as PTC, is phenyl thiose cyanide I guess not sure but yeah so in the primary metabolites they are not poisonous since it is involved in the normal growth and reproduction of the plant so it cannot be poisonous and uh, secondary metabolites some of these compounds are poisonous okay so we know that the bitter guard it's bitter taste it's just that it is not lethal to the humans but the taste is obnoxious so that the uh, people are not eating so that's why you see in human population that everyone is not eating bitter guard okay there are only few people who can tolerate the bitterness and thus they are eating the bitter guard okay so callus 
so this is important thing in case of plants to understand what is callus okay so this is important so it is also called as undifferentiated mass of cells which is grown on agar medium and it is conveniently used for starting and maintaining the cell lines as well as for studies pertaining to organogenesis and meristem culture so this will study later don't worry about it but still i can tell you organogenesis from the name itself it means it is the synthesis it is the new synthesis of the organs okay so what kind of organs we are talking about here so it can be roots or shoots right yeah now what is callus over here so you can see that this growth that is undifferentiated mass of cells why it is called undifferentiated because from these uh, cluster of the cells you cannot say that whether it is going to become roots or it is going to become shoot or it is going to become leaves nothing you can say it just that it's a clump of the cells which is grown on the agar medium okay now plant tissue culture can solve two basic problems that is it can keep the plant cells or organs free of the microbes of course right because that's why we are talking about the aseptic conditions and the growth of the uh, plant tissue in the controlled environment but when you say about the controlled environment it is actually talking about the light so there are few plants who doesn't need a direct exposure to sunlight there are certain plants who doesn't need at all light itself so they are like you know grow in the shadow and then the temperature is also a factor then humidity so all these can be controlled in a particular room where it can be grown second point is it can ensure the desired development in cells and organs by providing a suitable nutrient media and other environmental conditions so we know that in soil now because of soil erosion and so many uh, usage of the pesticides and uh, insecticide the quality the quality of the soil has been lost okay now this can be avoided once you grow in the lab because you can provide the suitable nutrient media so basically each plant needs npk now what is npk it is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium okay now the question over here for you comes is why it needs basic requirement of npk okay so this is your question or this is your assignment to find out if you don't know please let me know in the comment section so that i can tell you the answer but this is very basic actually so these are the two basic problems which can be covered by the plant tissue culture okay so here you can see that different images are given so from different different plants you can see the these are nothing but the types of callus only okay so these are from different different plants you can see it can take any shape uh, first of all we can say that it has no shape at all because it is just the random growth of the uh, undifferentiated cells okay now from what from these callus what we do is we take small samples we make it uh, in this sterile condition we make the small samples and these samples are grown in different different test tubes having the media now depending on the growth factor you provide it can be differentiated into roots shoots or the entire plant etc okay okay so what are the advantages of tissue culture so actually many are there so these are the few advantages which i'm going to share now over here availability of raw material so first thing is about the raw material we are going to discuss now what does it mean how pl how plant tissue culture is going to solve the problem of raw material the thing is there are certain plants which are difficult to cultivate okay so you must have uh, heard that these particular oranges are only known to be grown in nagpur only or these particular pineapples are grown only in kerala so this means what it means that because the availability of the perfect conditions are pro, uh, are provided by those areas only if suppose i want to cultivate all these particular uh, suppose oranges or pineapple in jammu kashmir i know it is not possible but if i arrange all the environmental conditions like that which is needed by those particular fruits and if i can make it inside the room then i am able to grow okay so that is the beauty of doing the plant tissue culture so the plants which are difficult to cultivate and are not available in abundance 
the tissue culture technique is considered a better source for regular and uniform supply of raw material now this is important for the medicinal plants see if you know that with the uh, advancement of technology and all so many people have stopped the ayurvedic uh, preparation for the treatment right now we are always uh, depending on the english medicine right so we are always depending on those uh, english medicine only and we have stopped using all uh, all the ayurvedic uh, practices now there are many since we know that like for example tulsi is a neem is a right we have got the aloe vera also so you know that these are readily available but there are many other medicinal plants like brahmi is a right so all these kinds of medicinal plants are like becoming scarce now because people are not growing them since they don't have that the uh, market value we know that it is important but it doesn't have that much market value so people are not growing so they are always behind the other things okay so what we can do over here is that since we know that these are very important so we can grow in the plant tissue culture so all these plants are very uh, short in size and the requirements are very less the nutrient requirement is very less so we can grow in the lab continuously so even if i have one plant okay i can just take the small piece i can just take the small piece of the leaf i can grow in the uh, in the petri plate the callus i'll get and from the callus i make small small pieces and grown in the different different test tubes so if suppose i have cultivated in the 10 test tubes so what will happen then from 10 test tubes i will have the 10 plantlets now these plants i can grow in the soil or i can grow in the bottle itself so now i have from one particular leaf piece i am having now 10 plantlets okay so this is the beauty of uh, tissue culture now fluctuations in supplies and quality so the method of production of crude drugs is variable in quality due to changes in the climate crop disease and seasons so this also can be stopped because in ptc that is plant tissue culture we always maintain one a uh, particular uh, environmental condition only so since it is controlled environment so there will be no fluctuation in the climate or you know in the temperature humidity and light so all these problems can be overcome by the plant tissue culture so new methods for isolation so it is possible to obtain new methods for isolation and new compounds from the plants can be obtained and then later you can uh, you can file a patent also if suppose there is a new drug discovered by your method which is really you know killing the cancer cells or treating the diabetes or treating the obesity so for example there is this plant called um, garcinia so people say that it is really useful for the treating obesity so many people are using for this weight loss so i'm not sure how much it is helpful but since it is all herbal so it doesn't have any no side effects are there so no side effects are there okay so if you work in this field like if you're working in the plant tissue culture and by chance you are able to find a new drug or metabolite which is helping in treating the cancer or diabetes or obesity this imagine what amount of market value you will have then right so this is one application you can have then biotransformation so it is a process through which the functional group of organic compounds are modified by reaction are feasible using plant tissue culture so what they are saying is that sometimes you have a protein okay or any metabolite is there so in this its natural form it is having some sort of toxic property now suppose you culture in the ptc what will happen the cells will take these metabolites and will convert into some other product so now that product will become modified and not toxic so this can be used later now disease free and desired propagule now this is possible because yes already mentioned because since it is we are doing in the and uh, in the control environmental condition so Uh, there is no chance that we should have a disease plant okay so large scale production of plant with disease free and desired propagule could be stored and maintained without any damage during transportation for subsequent plantation okay so this can be carried out uh, just because with the use of the ptc now one thing what you have to remember over here is that suppose you have a disease plant okay and you are not able to uh, kill the bacteria or kill that particular virus but you want the plant it is of very importance 
okay it is highly important plant so now what you can do so what you have to do is uh, take the meristem tissue okay take the meristem tissue of the plant or the meristematic tissue we say now that is always it is always free of virus or any bacteria because they are the rapidly growing cells in the plant okay so they are always free of the virus and bacteria so take that meristematic tissue and grow and convert it into callus and then from callus you can actually again grow into a whole plant okay so if suppose the question comes in the interview that you have got the diseased plant or the dying plant and if you still want to have that plant or you want to you know, preserve that plant so what is the first step you are going to do so your answer is going to be take the meristematic tissue of the plant okay and then culture it from there depending on the growth factors you provide if you provide oxen you will get roots if you provide cytokinin you will get shoots if you provide both in particular ratio you will get the entire whole plant okay so this is very important please remember okay so next advantage is biosynthetic pathway that is tissue culture can be used for tracing the biosynthetic pathways of secondary metabolites using a label precursor in the culture media so it means that you're going to add the radio labeled uh, radio labeled uh, amino acids or the radio labeled nutrients so that you can trace like which particular uh, step it is actually getting converted okay immobilization of cells tissue culture can be used for plants preservation by immobilization that is entrapment okay so you have this alginate beads are there so in that also you can trap the cells sodium alginate now this cells will help this immobilization will help in the transportation and the biotransformation so what is happening continuous uniform biomass is obtained suppose in these alginate beads if you trap these cells and these cells are responsible for the production of secondary metabolites then what will happen you just provide the nutrient media and these cells will keep on producing these secondary metabolites without losing any property without losing any number of cells okay you know so that's why medicinally important compounds can be synthesized which can to be synthesized chemically so for this every time an organic chemist is not able to carry out the uh, organic chemical reaction in the lab so there are certain you know there are certain things which you cannot you know synthesize nature has you know uh, so many complication is there so sometimes you have to accept your defeat that everything cannot be made or everything cannot be synthesized in the lab so of course you have to take the help of the nature so how much of a material you can synthesize just provide that material to the plants so they will take that as a precursor molecule and then finally will convert into the final product okay so that's why you can use the plant cells trap into the alginate beads and then can uh, get the uh, continuous biomass okay okay next so useful natural compounds can be produced independent of the soil conditions so this already we have discussed you can also improve the medicinal plant species for example the plant species is able to produce uh, for example i can give the example of one second so if i take an example of kesar or like you know the saffron so we know that in one plant itself you get only three stamens and that is what is like having the uh, market value so now using the plant tissue culture what you can do is get the uh, proper conditions uh, into which the saffrons can grow and modify in such a way that the number of uh, number of stamens can be improved like from 3 to you know you can make it actually 5 or 6 or more so that can be done okay now next propagation of plant with the seeds in defined and controlled conditions so you this is this can be done so you must have seen that many watermelon are there with no seeds okay so these kinds of improvement have been already done so similarly the many other improvements can be done depending on the requirement in the market now what kind of disadvantages are there of tissue culture so of course it requires high level of expertise any layman person cannot do uh, error small error may lead to complete collapse of the product of the plant yes even a small mistake or small contamination can result in the uh, loss of the entire plant tissue culture setup 
the lots of chemicals which are required there also uh, needs to be very high and most of these chemicals are also uh, costly and there is no chance for evaluation of mutations yes once it has been mutated so if you want to study the mutation then you have to go to the mall bio level right but in looking at the plant you won't be able to understand unless until there is a, a, a you know height differences there or the leaf broadening or widening differences there the number of seeds are different or the flowers are changing in color so these kinds of uh, mutations only can be studied now the culturing on the artificial media may lead to depression of unusual metabolic pathways which may not be beneficial to the biotechnologist so what are these it means that see in normal conditions that is in the nature the plant is using uh, making use of all the different metabolic pathways now if in the media you provide all the nutrition okay so the plants will understand that anyways i am getting the nutrition from outside so there is no need for the plant to grow or sustain the certain primary metabolic pathways so there will be uh, this will result in the depression depression of unusual and metabolic pathway means that particular metabolic pathways will be then lost okay and this will result in the generation of new variety of the plants now in majority cases the amount of secondary metabolites produced is negligible so even if suppose you know that it is very important even if you do so much of plant tissue culture variations there are high chance that it is not able to produce the high amount which is uh, expected by the researcher okay now the protocols for the end of the plant differ very widely and change in the medium constitution and environmental patterns affect the rate of the cell growth and accumulation of secondary metabolites this is also true so what you have done for one particular plant like apne orange ke liye kiya hai it is not going to be similar for the saffron of course right so you know that nagpur means it has got the hot parameters whereas the saffron are grown in the jammu kashmir area so there is a cold condition so every time whenever you work on different plants that particular plants needs different set of parameters to be standardized okay so that is a very uh, i mean it's a actually lots of work actually so much of labor work is there now to maximize the uh, on the cell mass produced the cell suspension culture eventually become very dense and these presents problems of even aerations so the problem over here is that uh if you're growing in the liquid conditions the cells they actually uh, grow fast and then it becomes dense it means it becomes clouded so there the aeration won't be proper so then you need to remove the or you need to discard few cells so that the other cells can survive so there is always a instability of course plant growth they always show the slow growing pattern and it is an expensive process aseptic conditions are need to be maintained throughout the growth of plant so this is already we said if suppose a disease comes it is going to uh, affect the entire tissue culture setup okay now these are the list of the historical development of the plant tissue culture uh, as such you don't have to remember but this will tell you how exactly you know the plant tissue culture started and now how it has been established so the people who are writing the university based entrance exam to get the admission into the msc for them it is useful okay but not for the msc students it is for the msc admission uh, required by the bsc so we know that the principle of tissue culture we involved 1838 to 39 in cell theory which was given by sleden and schwann so 1902 1902 heberland proposed the concept of in vitro cell culture this is important so i can just tick mark whichever is important you can remember that then 1904 hanning cultured uh, embryos from several cruciferous species then in 22 in 1922 kolde and robin successfully cultured root and stem cells respectively 26 indolecitic acid was discovered so this you need to remember and now white introduced vitamin b as growth supplement then in 39 gothers white and noble code established endless proliferation of callus culture this is also important okay so moving on to the next slide so in 41 over b was first to add coconut milk for cell division in dhatura ball raised whole plants of lupinus by shoot tip culture muir was first to break callus tissues into the single cells so what he has done over here is so there that time it was known that you have got the culture uh, callus then you can you know with the help of mechanical agitation and enzymatic agitation what you can do is these callus can be broken into small small pieces now each piece can be grown into the whole plants so that was done by the muir 
Swoog and Miller gave concept to hormonal control. Now this is important because now the media what we use for the plant tissue culture is called the MS media. That is, uh, sorry, uh, that is different. Okay, sorry, sorry. So that is Swoog and Miller. This also you have to remember. Then 1959, uh, Reynard and Stewart regenerated embryos from the callus clumps and the cell suspension of Corota. So even this you need to remember. Moving on to the next. Yes. So talking about the first two isolate protoplasts by enzymatic degradation of cell, even this you need to remember because when we are going to talk about protoplasts, so we are going to talk about him also. Then Bergman filter cell suspension and isolated single cells by planting. 1962, Murashi and Skook developed the MS media. Yeah, this is about, uh, this is I was about to tell you. So the MS media having the higher salt concentration, this is the media which we use for the plant regeneration okay so whatever plant tissue culture we are doing the media what we use is ms as in the case of animal there is something called dmem then you have got the rpmi so such medias are there for the animal tissue culture whereas in the case of plant it is called the murashi and spook media okay then kanta and maishuri developed test tube fertilization technique now this is also again important so 1962 two major event happened that is the development of the ms media and the test tube fertilization technique of the uh, developed by the kanta and maheshwari then in 1966 uh, in 1966 steve would demonstrated totipotency by regenerating carrot plants from the single cells of tomato okay so all these are important events uh, so which we have uh, which i have already mentioned a uh, few things you need to remember with respect to your uh, msc entrance exams so thank you guys and if you like the video please uh, share and subscribe any comments and suggestions are always appreciated any doubts are there please put your queries in the comment sections i'll be happy to give all the answers thank you guys